Okay, first cast fish. Actually, dude, watch me get skunked today. What's up guys? So I'm back with you with another video. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a breakdown today. Not really so much of a fishing report. Uh, it's just gonna be kind of talking about what I do best, I think, personally. I fish a jig a lot and I kind of wanted to answer a few questions for you guys that are out here fishing jigs and not having much success, you know what I mean? So um, the one thing with a, a jig that I recommend is you gotta go out and throw it. You can't just go out and throw it one day and expect to know how to throw a jig. Um, it takes multiple days of fishing them and fishing them in different situations, different water temperatures, different times of the year. Um, honestly, it takes a whole season of throwing a jig and throwing it a lot and to really kind of gain confidence um, in this lure. So I'll be kind of talking about uh, some of the colors I like to throw, uh, talking about some weights, of jigs because weight does matter uh, especially on pressured fish and uh, stuff like that and also the profile of the jig uh, comes into play and then I'll be also breaking down kind of my setups uh, I do like a really high-end setup for a jig and I'll explain why uh, if I have clients out and we're doing jig fishing I I, <laughs> I really frown upon uh, them throwing kind of a lower end setup just because I don't want heartbreak. And I'll explain a little bit more on why. So getting into it, let's talk about uh, my favorite jig. So right here, this is my favorite jig to throw all year round, especially in the winter time. This is a three quarter ounce football head jig, brown and red. And uh, I got a vehicle coming, so stand by for that. All right, so now it sounds a little better, but this is a brown and red three quarter ounce football head jig. And when I'm talking about this jig right here, this is my favorite jig to throw, mainly because it's it's gonna be mainly fished on a lake. And I, that's where I really like fishing jigs. It's not that I don't fish them on the Delta or any of these grass fisheries and stuff like that, but my favorite time to throw a jig is to really kind of fish it on the lakes out deep in 20 plus feet of water and primarily targeting uh, chunk rock or um, uh, rock ledges and stuff like that. So this is this is my favorite jig to throw. I usually pair this up with a, a Strike King Rage Craw in a Falcon Lake color. And you can kind of see, I'll explain later on the video here on how I wire tie these jigs, but you can kind of see the wire that is wrapped around there. It looks pretty, pretty tight and uh, nice. And um, you can get jigs, you can buy them from the store and you'll, they'll have rubber bands on them, which work for about a season, maybe two, maybe three if you're lucky, but eventually they will fail and you're gonna lose all the skirt material. They'll fail way before your jig hook and your weight or your head does, um, especially if you sharpen your hooks and stuff. So later on in this video, I'll definitely show you guys how I make my jigs and where I get all the components that I use to make them. But this jig right here, brown or red, you go out and you throw this for a whole season, you're gonna catch fish. You're gonna catch big fish too. Were you fishing this last time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. 
crazy how big of a water difference is from there. Net? Is that the one you missed yesterday? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the same size, maybe a little bit smaller. Oh, no wonder he didn't get off. Dude, the what a jump. fight. <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. <laughs> Look at that one. Oh, yeah. I got all that on camera too. Did you really? Yeah, for my chest. Hell yeah, bro. Well, you set the hook and I turned. Look at how he ate that shit. <laughs> Is a crawfish out here predominantly a brown and red color? They do molt throughout the year and they do change color uh, to like a more of just a green and red to a, a, just a brown. And I believe on Clear Lake, they turn a, a black and blue color as well. Um, but yeah, so this is one of my favorite colors to throw no matter what time of year it is. Uh, love this color. Um, another color that everybody knows, I mean everybody, is a... Uh, Brown and purple, PB and J, football head jig. And these are all three quarter ounce jigs I'm talking about. I'll, I'll discuss weights in just a second, but these are just colors I'm kind of talking about here. And some of my favorite colors I like to throw. Um, this is gonna be also paired up with the Strike King Rage Craw in the PB and J color. And you can kind of see this freaking thing's kind of chewed up, but, and the head's even chewed up. If your jig doesn't look like this, after a day of fishing, you're not fishing it right, so. Uh, but PB&J is a great color. Um, once again, I'm going to list all the skirt material uh, colors, uh, SKU numbers, SKU numbers, that I use to build these jigs as well uh, in the description of the video. But this color kind of comes into play. I would say I like throwing this color when they're not biting my brown and red color. I'll switch to this one as my second uh, kind of just option just to see if they'll bite it. Uh, a lot of guys throw this color, so this isn't my first option. I don't like to just go straight to PB&J. Not that it doesn't get bit, not that it doesn't get bit by big ones. A lot of guys catch big fish out here in Northern California on the, on the PB&J football head, but um, it's just not my first choice, uh, and that's just personal preference. These do catch a lot of fish, though. Now, if the fish are um, kind of conditioned or being pressured i like to throw this color i like to go just straight to a watermelon or a watermelon red and i'll pair this up with either a yamamoto flapping hog or not flapping hog um cowboy or a flapping hog if they want a more of a subtle trailer but uh usually i start with a cowboy and i've never really had any problems um where i feel like the fish want a really subtle trailer but because usually it's just a color thing. If I switch colors, I still get I get good bites even with a flapping trailer. But this watermelon color is great um, when the fish are pressured and you just want a more natural uh, approach to it. As well as around like, maybe if you're fishing um, rock outside of a grass line, uh, I like to throw a watermelon color because a lot of times craws will, especially in the summer, they turn green and they'll like to be in some grass. And so if there's crawls coming out of that grass and they're on those rocks, they're gonna be more of a greenish color and uh, help you pick up some more fish. Now, another color I like to throw if they're, especially if they're not eating my brown or red, I like to switch to just a straight rusty, rusty crawl brown. Um, this color has actually got me my biggest uh, jig bites. And unfortunately, that's where I'm gonna kinda kinda come into equipment 
um, I ended up losing those fish. I've lost a teener class fish on Berryessa on this color and multiple big, big ones uh, on this color. I'm not sure what, what it is about the rusty craw, but if I'm looking for a big bite, I go straight to this color or the brown and red gets big bites too. But this color seems to just produce really big ones for me. So now let's kind of get into the weight. Uh, those ones I showed you are three quarter ounce football head jigs. Those I'm gonna be throwing on rock, uh, chunk rock preferably, uh, out deeper, especially in 20, uh, 25 plus feet of water. I will step it up. I have a few one ounce jigs, a whole box of them actually, but uh, if I'm going out into 40 or 50, I'll throw those one ounce jigs. And don't be scared to go that deep, especially out here in Northern California. These reservoirs, the fish will go deep. Um, I've caught four, four plus pound spotted bass in 50 foot of water on a hump out in the middle of nowhere on a jig. So definitely don't be scared to go that deep. Uh, it does take patience and that's why you kind of have to step it up to that one ounce to really get down there quicker. So you're not just waiting forever for your jig to sink. Um, but also it's a one ounce jig. So when a fish bites it, they know right away that this isn't right. So you gotta be ready and you gotta hit them fast. Um, otherwise they're gonna spit that jig and you're gonna miss them, so. Um, but most of the time, if I'm fishing rock and these rock reservoirs out here, throwing either a three quarter ounce or a half ounce jig. I will go down and step it down even more um, on pressured fish, like really pressured fish, or uh, when the water temps are really, really cold uh, to a kind of a finesse jig just to try to get more bites. But most of the time I'm doing a, a three quarter ounce to half ounce jig. And when I say that three quarter ounce or half ounce, um, I'm dropping down to a half ounce to try and get more bites. And when you find a jig area, you get one bite on a jig, there's gonna be more fish around. So that's where you start breaking it down. You fish that whole area, you fan cast the crap out of this, maybe a section of a rock wall or this whole area with a three quarter ounce football head. In, a, in one, in maybe a brown and red or a brown color or whatever, and you catch some fish, right? Go back through with a half ounce in the same color, and you'd be amazed. It's almost like the fish had never seen it, because uh, it's it, it's falling at a slower rate. You're gonna be dragging it through these rocks, and every time it comes over a rock and falls, that's when you might get bit. Not saying that you won't get bit when you're dragging it, because it does happen every once in a while. But I would say majority of the time, a jig bite's a reaction bite. When it comes off a rock and it falls right in front of a fish or it falls and a fish out of the corner of their eye sees it, they're gonna swim over there really quick and smoke it. And it's falling, you know, anywhere between three to five feet, depending on the steepness of the ledge you're fishing or whatever. So it gives them a little bit more time when you're throwing that half ounce to get over there and freaking smoke it. So when you're dragging that jig along, if you fall, if you come over a rock and you feel it falling, and you know it should have hit bottom by now, you better reel down and be ready to set because that means that fish has got it. Because especially the big, big ones, if you don't have that high-end equipment, you won't feel that bite. And so you won't even know you have that, that absolute giant on the end of your rod, especially because if it's a three-quarter ounce or sometimes they'll feel, they'll feel the half ounce too and they'll spit it quick. And so you've got to be ready for that crap. Um, so when I drop down to a finesse jig, and don't be afraid to do that, uh, you're fishing these areas, you, you caught fish there, you switch to the half ounce in the same color, you caught more fish. Don't be afraid to downsize even more and throw a finesse jig. Uh, and I'm talking little quarter ounce ball head jig or a quarter ounce football head jig. And really, uh, really pick these areas apart. Cause you can, I've had days where I've been, I went through with the three quarter ounce and I caught fish two, two to four pounds, whatever, right? And then fish the half ounce, you maybe get a few more bites in that two pound range. And you go back through the finesse jig, and that's when the big ones show up. It's like they were there the whole time, but you throw that little jig at them and that's what they want. They don't want to mess with the big jig. And next thing you, you know, you got your five, six pound class fish and, and bigger, you know? Um, and that's, that's really what it takes to win tournaments. You know, if you're, you're fishing these areas and you're fishing for a tournament like most people do, uh, you go back through and throw that finesse jig and all of a sudden, bam, you got a couple tournament winning fish in the boat. So that's how I fish a jig. 
on these reservoirs out here in California. I think I'm gonna need to do honestly a whole nother video for grass fishing. I'm just gonna kind of focus this one in on reservoirs and kind of rock fishing. Uh, mainly because that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing here in the next few months, especially on Berryessa and Clear Lake uh, as the water temps continue to drop. So talked about kind of the weights, I talked about the colors, and now I'm gonna kind of get into the, the equipment here. So my favorite jig rods, and I'm very specific about my jig rods. Um, I talked about it a little bit in the beginning of this video here. Um, you don't wanna throw a jig rod that that's not very sensitive, um, mainly because you either won't feel the bite or you, you'll end up just missing more fish if it's not sensitive. Another aspect of a higher end jig rod compared to the low end jig rods is their, their speed at which uh, the tip flexes. You want an extra fast rod. And some of those lower end jig rods, they may say extra fast, but they're not extra, extra fast like some of the higher end jig rods are. So that's why I always recommend just, if you're gonna go and get into jig fishing, like big time, just, just dish out the money, man. Just get the $200 rod or whatever it is, get a good reel. You just kind of need a fast reel. You don't need a super crazy good reel, but the rod is the most important part, uh, as well as the line, I guess. But um, the rod is the most important part with the jig fishing. Cause when a fish, when you hook a jig fish on the reservoirs and in deep water, the first thing they do is they shoot for the surface. I don't know why they do it, but you will hook them and all of a sudden they are going for the surface. It doesn't matter what depth they are, they're, they're freaking going straight up most of the time, especially the big ones. And so when that fish makes that first jump, that's when you'll lose them if you don't got the right equipment. They, they get hit up and they, they jump and they shake their head and they'll spit your jig. It's heartbreak every time. I can't tell you how many fish I've lost uh, that first initial jump and just because i wasn't throwing the right rod now obviously you kind of want to try to keep him from jumping but if that fish jumps and he doesn't spit your jig most of the time he's not going to spit your jig after that but you don't want to let him jump anymore like you kind of want to dig your rod tip down and try to keep him from jumping but you don't want to stick your rod in the water um, it, when you're fighting this jig fish in, if you stick your rod tip in the water and he still jumps, it's over. Cause you just took all the fast action out of your rod cause it's in the water. You, you took all the, the, you took yourself out of the fight <laughs> really. Um, so that fish has the potential of spinning your jig. God, this rod's all jacked up. Anyways. Um, so this right here, this first one I'm gonna talk about is, it's a pretty good rod, um, for jig fishing. I would say it's not my favorite 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 that one's actually my favorite and i just got it so i'm pretty stoked about it but this one is the rod i was using before i got this one and it's a great rod uh the extreme mission type f for mega bass uh it's a mega bass orochi xx series extreme mission type f right there they don't come with a hook keeper so you gotta buy these online you can also get the cali clip or whatever but anyways this is a it's called the f5 dash 75 xx it's a 75 and it goes to three uh three eighths to one ounce and that's a pretty good jig rod because you do throw you know those three quarter ounce to one ounce jigs you know and this is a longer rod and it's an it's a extra fast um so when that fish jumps with that jig in its mouth that rod tip is going to take all that those head swings and keep it from throwing that heavy jig out of its mouth uh they got this i'd actually I'm cleaning all my stuff right now, so I got everything cut off these rods, except for that one. But uh, I got this on 15 pound P-Line fluorocarbon, and I'll downsize in the winter time to 12 pound, uh, which I'm probably gonna do it on one of my jig rods here, uh, just because it ends up getting you a little bit more bites, I think. Uh, that's just all personal preference. Um, when you downsize from 15 to 12, the fish don't fight as hard in the winter time. And mainly because they're cold-blooded creatures, you know, they, they can't fight as hard because they're they're cold. <laughs> Everything's super cold. So when you downsize that 12, you can still land a 10, 12, whatever, teener size class fish on a 12-pound line. You just have to set your drag and not be an idiot, you know what I mean, when you're fighting them. So I always try to do that at least on one of my jig rods just so just to make sure that I'm not going to miss that fish 
or miss the opportunity to get that fish to bite just because my line size. You know what I mean? I'd rather get the fish to bite and then worry about getting them in later. Uh, this is paired up with a Shimano DC 8 to 5 or 8.5 gear ratio reel. And I want that fast, uh, fast reel because it's really going to, when those fish shoot for the surface, it's going to be able to get you to catch up to them. As well as when they do the other thing, which is not shoot for the surface, but immediately swim for the boat or for deep water, which is usually where the boat's at depending on how you're fishing in this area, um, you want to be able to catch up to them. And if you can't catch up to them, they're going to get off. So that's this setup. Next setup, which is absolutely my new favorite jig rod, is the uh, G Loomis IMX Pro. This is a 7.5 extra fast action. And it's actually rated 3 16 to a 5 8 ounce jig, right? I throw a 3 quarter ounce on it. Is that going to break the rod later, sooner or later? I don't know. But um, so far, uh, I really love this rod. Every fish I've hooked on this rod has gotten in the boat so far. And I'm, I'm not saying it's been a lot, a lot, because I just got it. But it's been like 20 fish. And every single one of them has came to the boat. It doesn't matter how the size, how well they, they bit it, it. Every single one that I've set the hook on and got them hooked, they've gotten in the boat. They haven't gotten off. And this is also paired up with a Shimano uh, Corrado DC in that eight to five and uh, 15 pound P-line fluorocarbon. This is the one I'm probably gonna keep that 15 pound on and I'm gonna switch 12 on that one, uh, but we'll see. But anyways, guys, before this video gets super long, that is how I'm gonna be doing the jig fishing uh, this winter. Those are my setups. I'm mainly gonna be throwing that three quarter ounce football head and fishing them deep you know i might go to a one ounce and throwing it out deep deep where nobody's throwing a jig and uh another tip don't be afraid to throw black and blue do not be i, I know i didn't mention the color in here because i don't throw it that often but if you're looking for a really 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 big bite go out in like 50 foot of water and throw a black and blue jig and see what happens middle of the day clear water doesn't matter just try it and don't be surprised if you catch an absolute giant it's just something they're not seeing um they can they can see it from a mile away down there on the bottom because it, it just shows up and you can really get some big fish doing that. But another thing I want to talk about with you guys really quick in the last minute before it gets to like super long video, um, I'm doing a giveaway. Uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway uh, right before actually I post this video on Friday here. Uh, it should be already out there so you guys will see it. But don't be afraid to go over to my Instagram and... Uh, like comment and uh tag as many friends as you want every time you tag a friend it's going to add an entry in for you uh, for the giveaway which is uh going to be a guided trip with me for free no money involved you just come out bring your equipment or use mine on um either the california delta clear lake or lake berryessa in the springtime and it'll be a spawn trip so we're going to be looking for bed fish uh doing all that fun stuff and hopefully get you on a personal best an absolute giant during the spawn um so I, I, i'm so freaking stoked for this so i'm i'm really excited to get some guys out there on some bed fishing because it can be some of the most fun fishing uh of the year really you know you, you just see some absolute giant fish that you don't even know are really in a fishery until the springtime comes and you start seeing them come up and spawn um, and even ones that aren't on beds, you know, they're, they're just kind of roaming around areas getting ready to go on beds. You can definitely run into some of those. So be giving that away on my, on my Instagram, uh, for a thousand follower giveaway. And I'm a huge thank you to everybody who is, uh, you know, kind of supported the, my business and supported the, the YouTube and the, um, Instagram and all that stuff. It's, I mean, I can't thank you guys enough because you guys are really, uh, helping me out. Um, and just kind of proving that I can do this, you know what I mean? That I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm, I may not be the best fisherman on the planet, but I'm, I'm doing my best just to help guys get on fish, you know? So anyways, guys, um, hope this video helps you guys out this winter and, and uh, even throughout the, the summer months too next year and all that stuff uh, to help put more fish in the boat with a jig, you know? So uh, if you guys want to learn tips and techniques on how exactly I fish them more. Uh, definitely look into booking a trip with me. I will give you the ins and outs on 
exactly how I fish a jig, exactly how I fish areas, exactly what I do, like everything. We can do a jig fishing, um, just instructional this winter, uh, where we just go out and basically only throw jigs. Uh, maybe switch it up a little bit to maybe use some big swim baits and stuff like that, but um, only throw jigs and just learn them. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you on the next one. See ya.